In this video, I will be looking at network distance. So not distances as the crow fly, but distance along a specific network. So to illustrate this, I will look at the European Railroad Network. So again, I've taken data from uh, Natural Earth. This time it is the railroad that I've again clipped and projected. And I have my capitals from before um, that I can use. So um, I have these different capitals that will match up with um, the data set. So basically, I just want to find out if you are living in one of the capitals, how or working in it, how far out can you live and still make it to the capital in one hour? train journey so um what i basically want to do is i want to follow those ne the network here there's some things we have to know to start with first of all um i don't know where natural earth has got this network from um i have lived in copenhagen or around copenhagen most of my 57 year life and i have never ever heard of a railroad that goes from Malmö through copenhagen harbor and up to helsinger there's no ferry even that doesn't take um uh, we're a train on it um it's just strange um so there's of course always some critics that you have to raise when you are looking at um, data and this data has never been meant to do network analysis another thing you have to check is when we're doing this type of network we have to check that the network is connected so that the lines connect when we zoom in and then they do so that is good um so the network is relatively connected there are some there are some holes here and there but that's fine good so the other thing that is really important is that <clears throat> the points that we're going to use as starting points for our service area, so how far we can live from the co from coming, has to be located on the railroad. So, and we see that this capital is not located on the railroad. So we have to move the points a bit. If we look at Copenhagen here, we can see that it is off by. 2.3 kilometers um stockholm is off by a couple of hundred meters from its railroad uh this one looks really good so that's something about so uh, perhaps copenhagen is one of the worst there might be something up here so uh I'll make a new one. So from London again here about so let's say two and a half kilometers is five kilometers is is what we need to move. So first thing is then to move these um capitals to the railroad so they match. And this this is a tool like if you don't have to do it manually. So just like when we did the size data, we can also snap data afterwards. So there is a uh, a tool called snap to layer. So there's both a snap to grid and a snap to layer. So if I use a snap to layer, and in this case my input is my single point capitals in the right coordinate system and my railroads so there and we looked at this tolerance and we decided that we need to move them up to let's say five kilometers so five thousand meters and we can then do different things of how do we want to Prioritize. We just want to insert an extra node 
required and this is normally fine with me so i just run this too and it's relatively quick and what we can see is that if you look let's make sure that my snap geometry is visible so uh, if i look copenhagen now you can see that the railroad copenhagen has been moved out to this very strange railroad but this is not a um a course in public transport of Copenhagen so we'll just leave that um so we are basically good to go so now we need this network tool so there is these network analysis tools uh, there's some that are called from layer and some that are called from point and they call from point that means you can click on the screen at locations and it will work from there if they says from layer then you have to supply a layer that is for the purpose so in this case i'll be using for the layer because i will be using my snapped um cities so i will say i would like to work with my railroad i want to calculate the fastest route i want to use my snapped geometry as my uh, nodes that I'm working for. This is a bit strange. Normally in QGIS, and zero means that you haven't entered anything and just run as maximum. Every zero means zero. So if I said I want to do a travel time of zero, and this is in seconds, um, then they will be very short. So I will set this to one hour. So that's 3,600 seconds. And I will, don't, I could decide if I could both ways and don't, not go to set any of these. There's a speed field that I, if I had different speeds at the rail, different rail tracks. Um, and I'll just set a max, a, default of 100 and don't not use a speed field um, and um, I'm basically ready so I'll let it run and it will start running and it'll do that by first generating a graph as is saying here that is the computer the structure that you can use for doing this type of analysis so it's building up a graph that you can transform do the calculation on when it's done that it will start doing it um it doesn't take that long but i'll um i'll just break it here take a pause so once it's done the graph it will do the calculation of the networks and you can see this doesn't take that long time and um i'll just close it and hopefully i can in my layers i'll find this service that i can drag up here and um, I can give them nice colors. So I'll just uh, symbology, categorize them based on their name. And let's make it bigger. And classify, and fine. And we see this uh, fine around each capital, how far you can get into the capital by train one hour. And of course, Copenhagen's is rather strange, um, but that is because it's using this line here. Good, that's all good. There's just one little annoying thing. That is that if I look at the attributes of this one, it says that this is Helsinki. What? And if I look at uh, Helsinki, same move to Helsinki. What will that would be in Helsinki? It is uh, oh, Prague. Um, so although this software really is a nice software and works super, it has this one little annoying bug in it. Um, if there is a workaround because what it does, that does write the coordinates down here. So if we look close at the coordinate, you can see that it has a decimal value 
and then uh, five in small places, and that's enough. Only four, or is it five there? Um, after. So I just uh, copy this for um, for reference. So what I want to do is I want to create a um, a attribute that matches this because this coordinate is, as you can see, if I move my mouse over here, you see this is the coordinate that it reads out at the bottom of the screen. So, um, so it's using th this start is basically the same coordinate as the start coordinate was here. So I can, if I can generate this attribute based on what I've got here, I should be able to um, to join on this attribute. So I can go into my snapped geometry here, go to properties of it, and do a field calculation. Uh, where I will create a new field, call it coordinates, going to be a text. Uh, I don't know if I should use that unlimited. Let's set it here and set it to 50 just for 50. And um, what I wanted to match is this. So we can see we have. Now x coordinate and two five and our y coordinate of two five after them. Okay. So in order to do that, I'll need to concatenate some numbers. So I'll start with concatenate. Click here, say con. We see there is this concatenate on a string that puts strings together with a comma in between. So I say concatenate, and I want the x coordinate. So this is down in geometry, and there's an x somewhere. Ah, what is it that we're doing first? Oh dear, we have to be a bit careful here, you know, really, because here it's giving us. Um, I think it's right. Let's see. We want that rounded to five points. So there is a round tool here. A math round. I take this one and rounds it to five. Then I want to concatenate it with a comma and a space. Oh. Um, up here. So comma, space, end quote, single quote, and round of my. Y coordinate uh, geometry Y coordinate and then also has to be round to five oops to five and I guess I need to close bracket. So hopefully this is right. I'll just take a copy. In case I did something wrong, okay, and okay, and what the save the changes. So now, if I look at Copenhagen, so if I just open uh, the attribute table from this one here and find Copenhagen. Oh, there's Copenhagen there. So it should have a coordinate out here. Click 
hopefully matches what I've got down there as my start. Uh, was that the film hang? <laughs> no, that was from hardest check for this one here. This is the one I want to check if it matches. So, and Copenhagen. And this looks much better. So, it looks like they are matching. So, now hopefully I can go and say join in this data set. So, properties and choose join. I want to add a join to my snap geometry and I want to join on this coordinate that is going to join for the start of my network. So the network should start at the geometry point and therefore those two should match. So it's really a bit of a workaround. Um, but hopefully, if I now go up and change this one, so it now joins on the snap geometry. So that's the joined attribute name. Do a classify on that. Yeah. And OK. So now, um, this one, hopefully, if I Look down, see Copenhagen. So now my map, and you can see how Oslo is that blue color. It just looks right. Um, Copenhagen is red because I have a high tool on it. Um, Berlin has this, let's also look right. So, um, Little trick about using the start coordinate to join into the data set does um, solve that little issue that we're having with, um, with our um, network tool. So network tool is really a useful tool. You have to have useful data, of course. Rubbish in, rubbish out, as you say. So um, we... Um, we have to look at um, some of these properties. It has this little problem um, of um, doing um, its um, joining the name from its point. So we have to help it a bit um, until that is solved or someone tells me what I'm doing wrong. Um, but the trick about joining on the coordinate that will work. And um, I think, I hope you uh, found this useful it's um, a super cool tool to use and um, hope you like my little video and hope to see you in another one so bye